What are your thoughts on the Flysky Elysium EL18 radio? Um, I still have that radio. Um, I, have they done anything with it since it first came out? Like, my objection to that radio, my biggest objection to that radio was that it could support Express LRS. The chipset that's in it can do, it, it can do LoRa. And instead of supporting Express LRS, Flysky built their own uh, receiver ecosystem. And uh, I actually didn't realize this at the time that I reviewed it. It also does LoRa and is really long range. But it's like, guys, stop reinventing the wheel. Just support Express LRS. What the hell? Why would you lock people into your own ecosystem? What's wrong with you? I mean, that's how I would put it. Uh, and people at the time said, hey, they could just update the firmware and make it support Express LRS. And I was like, that would be amazing. And I told them that through the through our back channel. And I don't I haven't heard it about them doing it, so I'm gonna assume they haven't. Fly Sky ER eight EL eighteen. Like it runs Edge DX, so it's going to get firmware updates. That's nice. It's in stock at Banggood. But, um, I mean, the, the best thing that they did with this radio was that they made it support Edge DX, which means that if, when, Flysky, it gets abandoned, like the original NV14 got abandoned... The people who bought it won't be screwed out of firmware updates. But I just don't see why anyone would buy this radio. No, I don't see why anyone would buy Flysky receivers. If you do buy this radio, you're going to end up putting an external module on it to run Express LRS or Crossfire or something. And at that point, you've kind of ruined the form factor, which is kind of like the main reason you're buying it. So I wish that they had released a, a, a Express LRS firmware for it. Prival, Prival, Prevail? Wants to know any way to have more than 12 channel outputs using Express LRS Edge DX Betaflight 4.4 with a T20 transmitter. Um, yes. You Doesn't set 100 hertz or 333 hertz, and then you pick a full the full mode in the switch modes, and that will get you 16 you. channels instead of 12. Well done. Uh, that's 100F or 300F, right? It has to be the full mode. I don't think it's labeled F. That F is something different than full. F1. Oh, no, you're right. That's F L. That's F L R C. Hold on, I'm going to look. Yeah. You're right. That's F L R C. Thank you. It's my mistake. Um. The fuck. Attempt to index a null field. Oh, sorry. It's my cross. I tried to load the Express LR script with my Crossfire module. That's not going to work. I was very confused there for a minute. So your packet rates, you have 333 hertz full, or you have 100 hertz full. That's what you need to use. One of those two, and you'll get 16 channels. Yeah, I believe you have to pick those, and then you go down to the switch modes, and then it'll let you pick a full switch mode, right? I think that's how it works. Do you have? Do you not automatically get the 16 channels, or do you have to set the channel count? Let's double check. I think you have to set the switch mode, but I could be wrong. Oh, interesting. Let's double check. Okay, so packet rate to 100 hertz full. Switch mode defaults to 8 channel. I can set it to 16 channel, and it's rate over 2. So in other words, I'd be getting 50 hertz at 16 channels that's fine or i can get 333 hertz except it's at 16 channels it's half that it's like 150 hertz okay cool and we're going to go back right back to 250 hertz whoa don't default cat and bry cat and bry i'm yelling at you because you're here you love it can we change the default switch mode from hybrid to wide so I don't have to constantly keep making that change? Come on, dude. What do you, come on, come on! <laughs> 
8 channel is fine, but I'm tired of having to switch from hybrid to wide every time I go back. Oh, he says it is the new default. Good. Thank you. I will take credit for that decision. Christian M wants to know, how can you tell if an old flight controller like an SP Racing F3 is compatible with Radio Master RP1 Express LRS? Um, it probably is because all, the only thing Express LRS needs is Crossfire support. And Crossfire has been supported going way back. So I would think that it, it is supported. Like, it goes pretty far back. Um, we got a super chat here from Skydrone FPV. Uh, YouTube is telling me it's their very first super chat. Thank you for a $2 super chat. Skydrone FPV. What RC link preset for the Pavo 20 is best to use? Well, what RC link are you using? That's the question. What RC link are you using? Um, tell me in the chat. I'll try to keep an eye out. El Chingon. FPV. Every time I say your name, I feel like I'm swearing in a foreign language without knowing it. Can't arm. I've flown before without problem. Express alert. Bound stick response on beta flight. Motor response on beta flight. Only MSP flag. Mode set and responsive. What the hell is going on? Um... So sometimes when this happens, it's because you've got turtle mode active. So you arm and nothing happens and you raise the throttle and nothing happens. And you, you don't realize that turtle mode's active and you don't move the sticks. That's a thing that I've seen. Um, you definitely need to have warnings in the OSD. So if anything is preventing you from arming, then uh, you'll get warning. Definitely also have a uh, flight mode and arm in the OSD so that when you arm, you'll see an indication in the OSD that you've armed. And that just lets you confirm that things are working like you think they should. So like Tri-State Aerial points out that sometimes the calibration of the throttle's off and you have to hold the throttle down. Um, but, um, if that were the case, then the warning would show you throttle. Jonah wants to know which one's harder to fly with the beta flight rates or the stinger swarm rates. So, Jonah stinger swarm rates are fine for freestyle. They just can't race with them. If I had to pick one for racing, it'd be the beta flight default rates. Although they're not like my favorite either. 